I, uh, I'm, I have debated Bob on the separation of church and state issue years ago down at the state capitol, and that's why I thought of him for this evening. Um, I appreciate him being willing to come this evening. And I want to uh, encourage you to engage Bob in conversation afterwards, as if I'm going to have to encourage you to do so. <laughs> and I want to encourage you to write down your questions that you might have during the course of this so that you don't forget them during the break. And uh, those questions will be read to either one of us. Um, also, for those of you who are not familiar with what I do, I work for Worldview Academy. It's a Christian leadership training program based out of Texas. I live in Castle Rock, just down the road. If you'd like some more information about Worldview Academy, I do have a recent newsletter that my friend Zach and his uh, cohort here will be passing out to anybody who wants one after this is over with. And also, if you're interested in uh, the debate that Robert referred to earlier, um, I do have, would you touch this, sir? <laughs> Hot off the press. <laughs> right? Am I right? Burn fingers, sorry. <laughs> Call OSHA. Okay, uh, there's an attorney here. He'll represent you. You have the right to be free from religion here. No, just to, okay. Uh, this just came out two days ago, just got him two days ago. It is the debate that I did uh, about a month, two months ago uh, with uh, Professor Tooley from the University of Colorado, philosophy professor. And I would encourage you to get this and use it. It has a manual scorecard inside. They're, they're available downstairs. Um, you can get that. So, with that out of the way, you can check out worldview.org if you want more information about what I do. I'm ready. Uh, this debate this evening is to be on the topic, society is better off adopting an evolutionist model than a creationist model. Now, you and I all, both would agree that ideas have consequences. However, the term better off implies a benefit, which is not merely an advantage, but it is a kindly charitable act. Now that's a value judgment which flows from one's worldview. Your worldview is your set of glasses. It is your framework for understanding ideas. And this issue of creation versus evolution is fundamental to a worldview. How you decide the question of origins determines everything else you do. The model of creation basically states that matter and life were brought into being by the living eternal creator. That the existence of every system in the material universe is the result of intelligent design. That everything in the universe has a purpose and a function. And I would contend that this creator is the God of the Bible. Evolution, on the other hand, says that all the material universe is a result of chance arrangements of atoms responding to known physical and chemical laws. That life arose from non-living matter and the diversity of living systems is the result of random mutations acted upon by natural selection. These two models, a model is a, is a representation of an idea, these two models affect all of culture. I'm going to concentrate on four areas this evening. The first one would be science. Unfortunately, this debate on creation versus evolution has often been framed as a debate on faith versus facts, or it has been called non-science versus true science. Sometimes it's been called religion versus reality. When in reality, evolution is not science. Evolution is, at best, a philosophy of science. But I would also contend that creation is not science. It too is a philosophy of science. You cannot test either model. You cannot repeat either model. In fact, those who are evolutionists will say the same thing. Just recently, Dr. Eugenie Scott, who's the director for the National Center for Science Education and a very outspoken proponent of evolution, made this statement in the Denver Post. Evolution is a theory. It's much more important than a fact because theories explain things. <laughs> and this echoes 
Stephen Jay Gould, former paleontologist, leading evolutionist, who said that e every fact must be interpreted in light of theory. The model of evolution has provided great benefit in science. In fact, you might say that science is the daughter of creation. Great scientists who went out and made discoveries in our natural world did so because they were creationists. They weren't creationists who did science. They did science because they saw there was a creator who put order into the universe. And they went out to discover this order. It resulted in tremendous benefits to mankind. These are just a few. In fact, the renowned philosopher, science philosopher, Alfred North, North Whitehead said that the origin of science depends upon the Christian insistence upon the rationality of God. Men such as Joseph Lister, whose discovery of antiseptics expanded the life of countless numbers of people. The lifespans of people have been benefited because of scientists who were creationists. For example, Louis Pasteur put to rest the idea of spontaneous generation, that life came from non-living dead chemicals. That is the linchpin. That is the keystone of the evolution model, is it not? That life comes from non-living dead chemicals. Even though he 